Hey everybody, welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. This is episode 419 being recorded on, damn it, uh, September 28th, 2016. I'm Ryan Schrout. I'm Jeremy Holstrom. I'm Josh Walbreth. And I'm Alan Malmitano, and it's the normal people. It's been, I feel like it's been a very long time since we've had <laughs> the what normal the, ass people. On what the, the heck show. happened? Uh, but good news, next week it will be different again because oh, yeah. I'll be gone. Yep. Actually, I'm going to try to uh, call in from Florida because I have that. We have that spot up top that I found at the end that, that actually worked out well for that. And it has, it has decent internet. As long as I don't get blown away in a hurricane or something to that effect. Uh, welcome to the show, everybody. Um, I don't really have any other intro than to say that uh, you should uh, go to pcpro.com slash subscribe and subscribe to our notifications list so you can know when we're going to have uh, live streaming events. Much like this podcast is done, which we do on Wednesday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern. Some dingy. people in the studio audience just are so rude. Uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific uh, at pcpro.com slash live. And we sometimes do other streams as well. Some dirtbag named tom peterson comes by sometimes and we do what's live his, stream what's events. his freaking phone ring all the time. Know, his phone yeah and some people do like track suits today <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> it's got a big eastern european uh Alan's, Alan's yeah. secondary podcast Listen. yeah who's, who's to say i'm not kid? eastern european what's uh what's the what's the uh primary character in gta 5's name again oh that guy gta 4 gta 4 nico 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 nico, nico. <laughs> It does fit a little bit there, unfortunately. Uh, and also, for those of you interested in supporting us and Alan's tracksuit uh, buying <laughs> habits, you could go to patreon.com slash pcper and support us that way. Uh, it is a recurring monthly contribution to us that goes directly to all these guys making these shows, allows us to continue to pay people and create articles and do neat and cool things, including pay for churches and church reconstructions and that type of stuff. And as always, if you are a new contributor while we're recording the show and or increase your contribution uh, during the show, I will read off your name or whatever you put in that field on uh, on the Patreon form. So if anybody in the studio audience wants to go to patreon.com slash PC per and make a monthly recurring contribution, they can do that and I would read their dumb name out on the thing. You're not done Facebooking. No, I wasn't. Stop replying to the stupid presidential crap. Who cares? Nah, whatever. Stop it. I got to teach my other people. No, you're not teaching anybody. <laughs> You're feeding idiots. You're pissing in the wind yeah, is what exactly. you're doing. Like basically. Playing chess with a pigeon. No matter how well you play, it's still going to crap all over the board and strut around <laughs> like it won. That's awesome. I, <laughs> that's actually, that's actually really good. That's a really good analogy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Pretty good. No more chess with pigeons. All right. Let's get into the stories of the week. First up, we have... A uh, members only jacket from Alan. Uh, he's going back <laughs> in time. <laughs> you, you had this one, didn't a... you, Alan? Do you have a members only jacket? Uh, no. You sure? I don't. I don't think I ever had. He wasn't nearly cool enough for that one. No, I wasn't. In. I was wearing. I was busy wearing parachute pants in high school and crap like that. <laughs> does anybody remember? Does anybody, I wore skids. Does anybody remember skids? S K I D Z. I didn't have those either. These were these were pants. Uh, I think I believe I wore them about the same time I wore Bart Simpson t-shirts. Skids seems like a very bad name for something that sits right over it, your underwear. It had it had like pa weird patterns on it, like skid marks of vehicles and things like okay. that. All kinds of weird things. Okay, uh, to camouflage so, the these other the skid ones marks. Were backwards? Uh, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. But they were they they're big and baggy, kind of like parachute pants, but not quite as dumb. I see. Um, I, I had I had two pairs of brown corduroy pants that would zip along when I walked. Did you ever, Did you ever catch on fire? I never ran that fast. <laughs> yeah, no, I always, I always have that feeling. If you ever wear a quarter, I like zip, 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 <laughs> and you just engulf in flame. I bet those are pretty flammable pants. So probably. It's just like, you probably shouldn't put a Note Seven in your pocket. It's probably like a, a Samsung corduroy. level <laughs> yeah. explosion. That'd just be bad news. Corduroy plus happens. Note Seven equals. <laughs> uh, Chris in the chat says he thinks I was a Jinko wearer, and quite the opposite. I had one really good friend who, up until way too recently continued to wear jinko pants and i made fun of him at every living moment possible All for right. it until i think finally we finally changed. shamed him out of wearing jinko pants or he just couldn't buy them anymore or something that's probably it too because there was a point where he was buying them on ebay <laughs> like used pants and shorts because they don't make them anymore i have to have like, more of these oh, so there's a reason so make them pretty anymore. far when you're buying used pants on ebay i would agree with that that's... i would agree with that uh all right our first story of the week comes from Mori. this is a review of the asus rampage 5 Edition 10 motherboard. So this is their 10th anniversary ROG board. Um, 
that they... ROG RGB board. ROG RGGB. I made the mistake. Ninety nine. I made the mistake of going right to the last page of his review on this one. Yeah. And then I noticed the price, and I was like, "Holy crap! How much is it? It's. Just, I have to look again and make sure I'm not saying the wrong number. But it was freaking up there. Like what? Nine thousand dollars? No. Four hundred? Not quite. Probably it, more than four hundred would be my guess. It yes. Was, it was pricey. Yeah. Six hundred? Yeah. Six hundred dollars for is a, a motherboard. Lot of Six hundred dollar. But it's well, I mean, a, you're you're gonna be keeping it for the next five years, so uh, that's true. It's only one hundred and ten dollars, a one hundred and what twenty dollars a year investment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess it's just still, that's it's just still that's really a high. big number for a it's motherboard. It's really high. Yeah. Uh, you do get uh, you know you get a bunch of cool features and stuff. Is this so? Is this the board that also comes with the DAC? Okay, it does. I it think comes so. With the yeah, e, yes, the ESS does. DAC. Josh, you were telling me about ESS. Just above it there. That's a good stuff, right? ESS makes uh, some good stuff. That's correct. That Denon uh, we were looking at, and I think that your current mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, one is uh, ESS Saber based. I believe yeah. you that they're really good, but I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not the right you person. You probably to can't tell hear you. a difference. I'm probably not the right person to tell you. No. But the, that Denon receiver does work fantastically now. Uh, one interesting side note it's on off power. Uh, like just the physical switching yeah. of it turning on and off of the Denon or the motherboard of the Denon. Okay, significantly louder really? than on my Yamaha. No, what did I have before? Not a Yamaha. I don't know. I don't You're know. talking like the relay sound. Yeah, just like the ka-chunk. Yeah, like it was enough that my daughter, you know, 15 months old, when I replaced it, yeah. like the first time it turned off, like she like turned around like 180 like something like she had broken something and it was falling off of a table somewhere it was that kind of sound that seems abnormally loud for just really i, I looked it up and people talked about it like it was a uh, kind of a thing i mean some of them yeah I don't know. Like, why do you know what is it a circuit breaker or is it just freaking a relay i mean I don't know. it happens when it turns it off it's very like there's a guy in there flipping the main switch <laughs> yeah a mouse, a small little mouse. guys it has the big t handle yeah uh so in, in terms of audio this is as good your as good as good as you're going to get with this, right? So if I'm trying to look at this picture here, and I'm going to zoom in. Does it come with the breakout box as well? Yeah, yeah, it comes with the oh, breakout good. box that goes... I was going to say. I mean, you're getting all of Asus's bells and whistles. But even more much. than that, like, I don't think this has been in another board that I know of, this DAC. Because uh, you get your quarter inch, your three and a half millimeter, and uh, uh, connections all on it. So. And that DAC is in the box? With the motherboard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I mean is, is where's the DAC physically? Uh, it's in that the, box. It's in the, you're it's in the okay. three and a quarter so inch it's, bay thing. So, so it's away it's from... Million. So there's digital going to... Uh, yes. That's what I'm yes. trying to figure out. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there so is. Which is, which is significant, of, right? Because you're getting it away from the noisy stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're that worried about, like, being audiophile with a DAC and yeah. stuff like that. You don't want the DAC... Interesting, it's got a six-pin PCI Express uh, power connection on it. Does it? <laughs> Look, there huh. there it is. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Hey, you got to get power from somewhere. You do. Should, should use a floppy connector in my book. Um, <laughs> it's got two yeah, USB. It's kind of sexy. Yeah, two USB 3.1 Type C connections, which is cool. Two yeah. gigabit Ethernet. Um, you've got 802.11 AC. I'm assuming. Um, this is that's about as full as you can get a backplate. Yeah. Right? Is, is it two Type Why A 3.1 reset? and two Type C? It looks like. Yes, the red. 3.1. So it's side. got four 3.1 ports. Well, okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, I guess so. So that means it's got two all of, four of those are USB 3.1. So it's got two USB two controllers. We'd have to have two controllers. controllers. But yeah. they don't say Thunderbolt on it. No. So not. probably just 3.1, which yeah. is fine for yeah. the most part. And the dual gigabit uh, Intel NICs are red, which I find just strange. Uh, it was probably just the same color as. We're, the, and we're sure they're Intel. They're not. They're not killer. Right. Uh, no, they're two different Intel ones. Oh, that's right. They're doing the two different controllers. Another side note, as we're t- doing side notes here, did you guys know that for networking, we've got gig, 10 gig. Uh-huh. Do you know about 2.5 gig? And 5. Okay, I did not, I've never yeah. heard of these before. They're basically lower power versions of 10. My understanding is that the next thing you'll see on motherboards is 2.5 rather than 10. Yeah. It's, so. That, but to me, I had ne- I had honestly never even didn't even know it was a standard. Also, fun fact: it's basically the 10 gigabit hardware. <laughs> but is it how? Is it's it, running at a lower it clock. It's so running it's at a lower, lower clock. They don't have to certify. They don't have to cert. It, it's almost like binning. You uh, can get away okay. with binning the control. Those like. So chips. how do you get like a switch? For you it? buy one. W- what do you mean? Two point five G switch. Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen that either. Like I don't like. I don't know. Yeah. I was talking about undermine the, figured it out. It's because it's the land guard stuff. Oh, so it's got like the, the power, power surge. stuff. Yeah, yeah. okay. 
So, I mean, in terms of f fully featured boards, this is going to be everything you could ever want, probably plus stuff you didn't want. Uh, but it's got this 10th anniversary logo on the back, of it's which nice I now have logo. a pint glass of mm. sitting over there. Um, that I had a midday Heineken Oh, is that what, that what that came with or yeah. was from? No, they sent it to me separately. It has a really cool, like, heart life bar on the side. Yeah, as the beer goes the, down. As the beer goes yeah. down, your heart life bar is there, a little There's bit less lower. numbers of hearts. Um, yeah. Actually, it should go up. <laughs> Maybe it's, well, no, it's, yeah. it's trying to convince you to refill. So yeah. it's got the LED header on it, and you can see here where Maury demonstrates it's in function there. And you can see, like, the LEDs on the motherboard itself. Uh behind those memory slots or behind the PCIe slots rather I feel like Sebastian just plug some dims into those memory slots there for extra <laughs> extra bandwidth yeah uh, uh, matches the LED strand there so this is a wow look at all the SATA ports 10 SATA ports plus a uh, U.2 and an M.2 and one M.2 yeah nice well done well done there's a lot of stuff here but it is would you guys say $600 yep Oof. Yeah. or more Woof. That's the uh, battery out placement. There. Well, it, you know. well, let me check. Hold on. Oh, battery no, I checked. Placement. It's 600 on Amazon right now. It is now. on its strength. And CMOS that's the most battery, battery placement. And that's what's like, I almost expected 10 gig to be on this board since we already have seen motherboards with well, dual 10 gig on Well, we've seen, they've them. announced one as more of a workstation board and this is a game. They announced two. It. One that had an add-in card and one that had it on board and it was a workstation class. Wow. Yep. Yeah. But it was also cheaper than $600. It's probably right at I, that. They never announced a price for it. Uh, well, if it was, it. I would bet it it's in the 500 range. Yeah, honestly. So, yeah, th I mean, I think that would have been nice to see on here as well. Give you a little bit more excuse to to shell out the cash, that, uh, especially if you're not if if you're like me and you're somebody who's like maybe not particularly interested in like the DAC side of things. Yeah, like, you know, it's not just not your forte. And that's probably eighty dollar or add on type to that price. You know, so still pretty cool. Uh, dual giggy. You know, we got a formatting error there m.2 port placement positive rgb led everything's got rgbs frankly yep. i can't believe that nvidia amd released video cards without rgb support like maybe somebody wanted colors other than green and red well you know what probably their partners begged them not to put them on so yeah. they can at least kind of differentiate it but they all differentiate it the same way i always laugh because msi's nvidia graphics cards are red and black and I know that's got to eat at him. I know that's got to eat at <laughs> NVIDIA a little bit. I know it does. <laughs> uh, all right, let's get into our next story here. Uh, this is a review from Lee of the FSP Hydro G850 power supply. This is the first FSP power supply we've looked at. FSP as a company has been around forever. I think they were like some of the first... Uh, power supplies that I ever used because they were included with cases like that type of stuff. They've just been around forever. They've been an OEM for a bunch of different companies, uh, but they're just now trying to get into like the U.S. North America retail market. Um, so they released this one called the Hydro G. Despite the name, is not a water cooled yeah, power that's, that's supply. Yeah, that's what I was about to ask. Not a water cooled. Why would you name something? It has like hydrodynamic hydro bearings. Uh, on the fan. On the fan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit of a stretch. I'm not going to lie. No, no, it's it's waterproof. So next time you power up, just dunk it in a cold <laughs> bucket of water. Uh, okay. I've heard you can drill a headphone jack into it as well. Yeah. yeah. Also true. Mm. I will. Uh, at the end of this story, I'll talk about my, my trip to Dell last week where I we did dip laptops in water. Uh, so this FSP Hydro G Series, 650, 750, 850 watt outputs. Uh, available 80 plus gold certified so this should be a little bit less expensive since it's not going for that platinum uh, rating it has the fluid dynamic bearing fan as you pointed out uh, fully modular uh, and all that good stuff uh, and I want to say let's see what we're looking at here what's our amperage on uh, 70.83 amps on the 12 volt is that enough can it should be you to arc, arc weld? weld yeah to arc weld correct I don't know it also, on the box, it has this Intel Skylake logo that I'm almost 100% positive is not an official look, look Intel at the, logo. Look at the stickers. They're stylish. You get Ooh. your choice. Oh, you get to choose. Yeah. Uh, okay, so it's not RGB. What yeah, it, is. it is. It is. It is RGB. It is RGB. It's just it's like nothing pick. in between. <laughs> it's just one or the other or the it's other. It's three-color RGB. <laughs> you can choose the red sticker, so the green you, sticker, So if you put sticker. all stickers on, will it suddenly turn white? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's slightly translucent on all cases. You can make combinations. Do all power supplies do this now where they give you your pinout on the side or your, uh, your cable? Uh, I that's, think that's it's actually, smart. That's a really good idea. If people don't do that, they should do that. Um, 
So overall, uh, a very good unit. I want to say, I'm going to skip here again to the end as well and look at uh, Lee's conclusionary statements. Again, look at that RGB capability there. A little artistic it up as well. Um, look at the size of those caps. You got oh, yeah. to love them. Caps. I like big caps, and I cannot lie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so the 850 watt is 115 bucks. The 750 is 105, and the 650 is 94. So significantly less expensive than like yeah. the 180, 190 well, dollar platinums that we've seen. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the only weakness that Lee found with it is that it did not include a second ATX EPS four plus four CPU cable connector, which not a whole lot of motherboards are it's using. Really, that. not that many. Maybe that second. ASUS one we just talked about would be one that would use it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But not a whole lot of boards. Really Even the ones that do have it, it's optional. Oh yeah, it's always like, like you don't have to plug in the second. It's not optional on some server boards, probably. Sure. But for consumer no. boards, I assume it's always optional. Hmm. But it did get a gold award from Lee. Uh, so if you're interested in a you know a modestly priced power supply uh, that seems to be pretty damn good, it still has a five year warranty on it. Uh, he lists it here as consumer friendly pricing as one of the strengths. Not just low prices. Lee wants to know it's consumer friendly pricing. So welcome FSP to the onslaught of power supply companies continuing to exist in the world. Yep. All right. Uh, oh, real quick before we get to the next story, I will point out. While you were in Samsung, you were not Seoul. in Samsung. You were in Seoul. No, I was not in visiting Samsung. Samsung. I was in Austin visiting Dell, and they took us out on this houseboat, and they were showing us their rugged line. I'm, I'm getting a sample of one of these uh, fully rugged, like 14 inch laptops that we it, docked up against. Go ahead. Is that the one where at CES they just like threw it on the ground and were yeah. just like tossing it around? Yeah, I mean, we took it. They took us on a boat on Lake Travis in Austin. Um, and then they brought out like two jet skis and they strapped the tablet version of this to the front of the jet ski and you <laughs> used it as your GPS guidance to like race on a track, a virtual track because it was no actual thing in the water. <laughs> but the, the key was, it's like, okay, like it's getting jostled around a bunch. It's getting water sprayed on an ocean time. water. Oh, wait, no. Lake it's Travis. Lake water. Travis water. <laughs> okay, sorry. It's Colorado River. Sorry. Um, and it's lake water. Uh, and then with the ones with the handle, like the full size, like the actual ta- uh, laptops, not the tablets, like we were docked up against one of these little islands, limestone kind of outreach, outcropping, I guess. And we would, we, you could take it and just, we just threw it off the back of the boat, probably 25 feet through the air, skidding, ac- like crashing, skidding across a... Makes a really nice sound, doesn't it? It's, it like... You cringe a little bit. After the first one, I, I was like, ha ha, it's funny because they're not my $5,000 computers. Um, we did have one casualty that somebody, after immediately after they threw it on the limestone, dipped it in the lake, like the whole thing. <laughs> and it looked like one of the uh, one of the, like, the latches that closes all the ports. Uh, like there's like a port, like a, there's like a door that hides the HDMI port and stuff like that. When it hit the limestone, it dislodged one of them. Yeah. And they didn't close it again before dipping it in the water. So it, apparently somebody said they were going to dry it out and it would work. But I don't I don't know if that was the case. Uh, but it was still impressive nonetheless. And like you could, they showed, they had videos of like cars driving. They had, uh, one of them was a convertible. It looked like, uh, what was, it was a Dell that made the one that had like the, the frame of the screen. Yeah. And then it flipped inside the frame. They have a rugged mm. like that. And they show it with the screen side up, a car driving over it driving onto it and then stopping and the whole like ta- uh, the whole laptop skids across the ground with the with the car for a couple of inches as it comes to a complete stop and then they just take it off and it's fine so it's wow. it's, it's an interesting it's a really interesting market that i had no idea about and learned about uh, on this trip just like how many different markets use these what the life cycle is how like oh the like panasonic tough book is kind of the de facto standard but Submarines Dell's, and ships in the Navy. They're all using... They're just, that's all they got. This is the rugged, anything the anything that's machine. a portable laptop-type machine is always a tough book. Yeah. On, oh, on those platforms. Problem, my bloody co-workers they have use regular this. What? Say again, Jeremy. I said a couple of my bloody co-workers could use this. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. we're a Dell shop, so I'm actually kind of hopeful. Yeah, yeah. Josh, you were going to say something? Well, yeah, like drilling platforms. I mean, yeah. you're... Surrounded by dirty men and oil and water. And well, I mean, like the biggest one that rugged. Dell talked about was like police forces. Yeah, yeah. Every police oh, force a uses a tough cruiser. book or a rugged the ones style that are mounted machine in the that cars. mounts in their thing. And mm-hmm. and Dell talked up like they have. They're the only company 
you know, there's really just Dell and, and Panasonic, but the Dell mounts for these cars will work with any of any laptop in their line, whereas the mounts are specific for each Panasonic model. So if you upgrade or change, it has to, it to change things around in the car to do it or whatever. Um, and it's, it's a, a wildly growing market, apparently. I don't think it's like I'm getting a review sample in, but I do not think it's going to be one where like, I'm going to use this as my only laptop for a couple of weeks and see, because it's like, is about the size of a backpack, right? You know, it would not fit in it necessarily. But that's just some great video content. But I, but I did think it was like, it's true. This should be the first laptop I get my daughter, right? Yep. You know, she could spill crap on it or and do all kinds of stuff, throw it oh. down the steps, and I don't have to worry about it. I don't know. It might be floor. rugged and military spec, but is it kid proof? Is it baby proof? Because that that's good question. yet another step. <laughs> it is. Uh, all right, let's get into uh, Sebastian's next. Or review up here. This is the uh, uh, how do I pronounce it? Vertical mouse. Evo- <laughs> no, I know how to pronounce it. vertical mouse. <laughs> Jackass. Evoluent. <laughs> Evolu- Evoluent. 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 Voluptuous. Voluptuous. <laughs> vertical mouse. Vertical. So I have. Have any of you guys ever used a product like this before? No, I have yes. not. Okay, you guys have. So what is your thought on the idea Josh of... Josh does all the time. It's, it's just... It's, it's, <laughs> it's just, beer. It's yeah. not, I said mousing product. Not oh. anymore. Same difference. So yeah. the arm neutral versus arm twisted, I mean, it like it logically makes sense. If you sit here at your desk and you put your arms down, it's kind of yeah. more comfortable to, to have your hand in this position as opposed to in this position. You're going to have to unlearn 20 plus yeah. years worth of uh, you know, yeah. regular mousing. What was your experience with it, Josh? Uh, it takes a lot of getting used to. Does it? Yeah, it kind of does, because uh, you don't know exactly which fingers you're pushing to do what, even though it's the same right button, left button, except vertical and mouse weird. top and bottom. And, uh, you know, you got the scroll wheel kind of by your thumb, and, and uh, well, yeah, just like it, it takes takes some getting used to. I mean, you're totally rotating the axes that you're using, right? Like Yeah, but I, I, I haven't spent like three well, hours gaming. No, I don't, I don't mean the fingers. I mean like... Oh, yeah. What would normally be just like a nudge to the left where you would have your arm like resting on the desk right. and you would just twist your wrist to the left with a regular mm-hmm. mouse. You have to curl your hand. Now you got to kind of like slap. Uh, yeah, it's it's like a total. Up. It's a totally different set of muscles oh, to move to. The to left me, right. it seems more weird. Like I'm used to if when you left click, you're putting pressure down on the table. So there's like a force resisting yeah. you and this you have to squeeze Whereas when you're doing that yeah you can't just push your left thing yeah, otherwise you're gonna move the mouse, the mouse right yeah. well so but you got your thumb on it so you're 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 gripping it so you're pushing against yourself yeah, yeah. it doesn't necessarily it, feel weird that way it feels weird as josh is saying and it looks funny i know that trying to beat the the just the instincts of you know a, just a twist like that was moving your mouse and cursor previously now you're you're actually lifting the mouse off the table and you just, your brain just sort of gets a little bit weirded That's, for a while. Sebastian, Sebastian said he used it for a week straight yeah. Yeah. as his yep. primary mousing device. Look at that beautiful hand. It's gorgeous. It's white balanced. Ooh. The scanner, though. Photoshop. Frame, yeah. Yeah. Probably. It's uh, all white balanced. <laughs> but I used one for the better part of six months when I had uh, some cubital tunnel syndrome that was driving me mm-hmm. insane. But I went with an anchor mouse, which was like 20 bucks. Okay. And it did everything this one seems to. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious. This one's 109 bucks. Yeah. And Sebastian does sort of go into why he liked it a little bit better. But at the same time, I'm just compare it to a $20 one. And, you know, is it really worth six times the money? Yeah. And Sebastian seems to be fairly impressed with it. He notes here that it has a very premium build quality and feel. The vertical orientation takes getting used to, but it actually did work. You know, he's talking about um, using Adobe Lightroom, and it always used to make his wrist and hand ache after a couple of hours. But that kind of, once you got used to the process and the new motions and stuff that you're talking about, it was actually kind of have gone away. I wonder if with that price, they're kind of trying to do a play at like legit medical like yeah i mean know, there's always an argument to ergonomic that, well just to get into to get to be the one that's recommended by a doctor like for carpal tunnel or something right, right. right then yeah i can see that i can know. see that nine out of ten left-handed mousers hate this product <laughs> well that's true yeah do they make a left-handed see, version good reasons why you can't yeah. convert this right it's, oh it's, yeah that's true well isn't like right-handed the name so you would assume they might make a left-handed they might version. make a left-handed oh, one yeah okay. yeah 
So I'm it'll be a, sure it'll, it'll be a niche one. of a niche. <laughs> Apparently, this the company that makes this calls themselves the inventor of the handshake grip. I'm sure they do. But, I mean, uh, they might be. Who knows? I, I I might like to try something like this. Like, I'll be, this is probably not. I wonder how much your accuracy changes if you're doing this for like gaming purposes. You'd have to get used to it. Once you get used it's to it, it's probably insane. the same. Yeah, I would like to try this. I might I might have to pick one of these up. Yeah. Hmm. Feel like you're arm wrestling <laughs> your mouse every time you go left. Well, I, you know, just you sit in front of a damn computer on no, a desk all day, every day. Yeah. Eventually, it's just going to catch up to you. So that is the, uh, I'm going to spell it E V O L U E N T. Uh, Evoluent. Evoluent? Evoluent. Evoluent. I don't know. They should have picked a better name. Uh, <laughs> that's the vertical mouse. Like Sharkoon? The vertical mouse C. Yeah, they could have gone with Sharkoon. Uh, wireless mouse. So, thanks, Sebastian, for that. It's okay, bud. It's all right. Uh, <laughs> another Sebastian review, the Silverstone Primera series, PM01 ATX enclosure. I don't know anything about this case, except it's, it's red. shiny. It's black and red. Uh, I can see an air purifier in there. Oh, you're it's like those MSI so NVIDIA cards. <laughs> 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 he spent so much time trying to, trying to Photoshop that shit out. <laughs> Uh, Nobody's ever going to see it, to tell you the truth. He but takes anyway. good pictures. I need him down here to take pictures of all these MSI look at the Look at the red wire like what, shrouding that, and stuff. That's no, a scroll, fan filter. No, scroll down. Scroll down. Look at the red. Yeah. yeah he, see, doesn't, like, he doesn't screw around. This, that's that's right? serious, man. It's about the aesthetics. Uh, so uh, this case, some of the highlights here, 340 uh, millimeter LED fans uh, with built-in LED strips for stunning visual impact. Oversized front panel supports for 2240, 280, or 360 millimeter radiators. Um, a reservoir water tank mounting holes. So kind of, you know, built at that extreme uh, audience there. And a two-in-one fan hub for fan cable management, which is pretty nice. I guess then you can't control them all independently, though, right? If you're using a two-in-one hub? Mm, yeah, they should... Be, they this should, should all the be same. the same power yeah. level at that yeah. point. But I mean, you know, if they're just the case fans, like you're not that worried about. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, high, medium, low, right? Like just yeah. set it up and run. It's got an interesting design to it. So this is this is Silverstone, and so it is kind of it, it does invoke like the Raven style. Yeah, to me, mm -hmm. quite it's a got bit. Kind of a chisel kind of. Yeah, the angle like, at the top. It's like a beak. Uh, yeah, no, but the toupee sort of on the side view, just the toupee like this. Yeah, oh, yeah, it does look like it. <laughs> is it a Donald Trump hairstyle? It's, it needs to be showing? orange. Yeah. From the front to do and a back, it looks mod. good. From the side, it's just I don't know. It's almost like the the angle and then like the lighting of the reflection is what makes it look like that. Yeah, but this mm. could also be true. Yeah, you know, I mean that doesn't change the fact that it looks like that because like from the back it doesn't. There's like there's no. To me, it looks like it's recessed right here. Yeah, but it's not actually. But it's not like if you look at the side, there's no, yeah. there's no cool. cavity there. Interesting. Um, huh. Pretty interesting little build there. Let's look at uh, some of the interior shots here. No three and a half, or no, I'm sorry, no five and a quarter inch base. So if you got that Asus motherboard with that DAC, what do you do with that DAC? That was a five and a quarter, not a three and a half. Top. That was a five and a quarter. That was a five and a quarter. Oh. What'd you say, Josh? You duct tape. <laughs> Just duct tape you ruined the, the aesthetics. Top. Immediately screw up everything that was good yeah. uh, about the chassis. Um, everything is removable. Uh, it looks like it's all plastic. You know, all the fascia and stuff on the outside is all plastic. Um, decent cable routing. Plenty. Well, it looks like we've got two, two and a half inch drive bays plus three, three and a half inch slash two and a half inch drive bays. So a, a decent amount there. Um, looks like it's all toolless. Uh, yeah. So I, let's look at the results on this. Look at that. See, there's that red cabling yeah. again. There's a little bit more space in that than I was expecting. There is. Probably it's bigger than it looks. The, the the depth here from the edge of the motherboard to the to the to the fans there is really what's really what I think what they're going for like out. that's where you would put your reservoir. If you yeah, this is where your like reservoir that. mounting holes are. Yeah. But you don't get it doesn't look like it supports that what is that, the ninth slot type thing? Like if you're doing four way yeah. crossfire. I guess not SLI, but whatever. If you're doing four GPUs for some reason, you could do it that way. Well, I mean, you know, everybody's kind of moving away from that, right? They are. Well, NVIDIA is. Yeah. Um, if you look at CPU temps, it's, uh, where is it at here? Pretty good. Actually, amongst the best 
yeah. in terms of cooling performance there it's and nice, a GPU temp. It's a nice spacious well. case with uh, uh, you know a bunch of fans on it. So. Noise, noise level is not that great. Maybe that's how it gets to those great performance levels. So oh. you know you know louder uh, than the Carbide 600Q, Fantix M3 Prime, Carbide 400C. So a little bit of a trade off there. Look at that. Look at another that fancy shot. You think this white spot is that uh, that same thing, Josh? No, I think that's just Sebastian's really white face. And very square at that. 109 bucks, 109 bucks on Amazon. Uh, weaknesses, high airflow design with large front grills, increased noise output, which we saw in that graph there. Top mount clearance poses an issue for thicker liquid coolers. Okay, so the delta, the gap between the top of the motherboard and the top of the case was small uh, okay. as well. Um, and then the black gloss finish requires care to prevent scratches or swirl marks. And I believe in our chat today, he compared it to the jet blue, to the jet black iPhone issue oh. as well in terms of swirl marks, just kind of being shiny an black almost, plastic, an almost immediate thing that occurred. So uh, I wish just the gloss black thing just needs to go like, especially when it's plastic. Yeah, it, piano it just, black looks great when it's clean and dust free. You just and can't. All that you stuff, can't even clean it without making the swirl marks. Like you basically scratch it just by cleaning it. I agree. With even like the softest microfiber, anything mm -hmm. like you most know. car finishes. <laughs> <That too. laughs> but uh, but except this is just plastic, and it's not even as it's not even as put, durable as a car can't car like finish. Buff it down and rewax it. <laughs> you could buff it, but oh my god, if you're sitting there with the freaking dual orbital on Under your freaking case. computer case come on like that's that's kind of ridiculous right it's actually a pretty oh, good oh look there's another fan in, in fan I mean, you take could now. you Oops. could you could dual orbital like you know compound and polish oh, your man. plastic but then you just look at it funny the next time and it's scratched again so it's just like eh. yeah it's too soft of a of a finish to to be a glossy finish just be careful eh. don't have any interaction with your computer chassis uh, all right, let's get into some news items here. First up, the AMD A12 9800 APU overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz. Um, I, I guess, yeah. th sure. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Ryan has no you know, words. Well, this is kind of this kind of interesting okay. because uh, you know the the 9800 has not been announced yet, but we have a variety of OEMs. I think you know HP has some that they. Throughout into Costco, we knew that they were mm. building AM4-based uh, Bristol Ridge um, PCs. Probably back in June, we saw pictures of of uh, those pieces being put together. What's interesting about this is that it's all based on Carrizo. So Carrizo was meant to be low power. Uh, we saw in the 15 to 35 watt ranges, and you know AMD always said, well, you know, after a certain amount of power is applied, the 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 clock speed does not rise nearly as fast. I mean, it just kind of levels out. Sure. No matter how much power you you put to it. And we've looked back at uh, you know three or four different generations of uh, of bulldozer based products. You got bulldozer, Vachera, um, excavator, Creso, yeah. Um, and each one of those has improved in IPC and other aspects. But the last two have taken the clock speed down from previous generation products. So like an mm -hmm. 8350 can clock up to 5 gigahertz. But the, uh, the latest uh, A10 7800 series, uh, what, the 7970 is, is one of the top. Those crap out about 4.5, 4.6 gigahertz. So, and those are a 95-watt TDP part. So made on the same 28 nanometer process technology, uh, AMD is able to get these Carrizo based parts to clock far higher at a lower TDP than really anybody expected them to. So hitting mm -hmm. 4.8 gigahertz on a 65 watt TDP uh, chip. Now, obviously it's, it's going to be producing more heat and, and eating more power than 65 Watts, but they're able to clock that up and do pretty well. And so you've got an IPC jump from the previous generation excavator parts and, uh, yeah, you get a little bit more headroom and a lower overall TDP. It's it's kind of a Do we, interesting win-win, uh, especially as this is kind of the last generation, last gasp of the bulldozer ar architecture from AMD. When's this supposed to be out again? Nobody knows. Oh, 
Okay. I, I think the guess is that we're going to see uh, you know the HPs and Dells and and some of the other guys uh, put out the lower end parts in between now and November, and I would expect AM4 launch to be late October, mid November okay. type okay. time frame. All right, and I, I would I would caution people that. I still believe that the AM4 boards that ship in that time frame will probably not be compatible with Zen when it comes out. That's my guess still. I don't know if they've said officially one way or the other. I know the I AM4 think that, I think they will, will be compatible, but you're going to get some issues like uh, these first, you know, B350 boards mm-hmm. uh, that that are kind of designed around Bristol Ridge. You'll probably only get a by 8 connection, physical connection mm, to the okay. PCIe uh, the PEG slot so you might be limiting yourself on your connectivity yeah so but with yeah. zen and the higher end x350 i think is the leaked thing is is you'll probably have you know far more pci you know pci express I so. god i can't talk tonight pci express uh lanes yep and uh some other fun stuff so yeah it'll work but it's probably not going to be your best bet All it's right. not an enthusiast board All right. toshiba AKA OCZ. Wait, no. Or is, is OCZ like a brand? OCZ now? is the consumer brand. SSD brand of uh, Toshiba. So it's correct to say Toshiba announces the OCZ TL100. That's kind of how those are. Okay, so Toshiba yeah. announces the OCZ TL100, two and a half inch. This is just SATA SSD. Just SATA. 240 gigs at 28 cents per gig. What else do we know? So, it's, oh, it's only 120 and 240 gig drive. Yeah. Weird. They're going for just the smaller capacities. Why? It's TL. It's they're just it's budget. They're going for okay most possible budget thing. Yeah. Uh, I would imagine the controller might. They, they don't just. They probably don't even want to put enough. Uh, like the controller might be limited in that. It's probably DRAMless. DRAMless. Yeah. In other words, there, there's controller designs now for SSD controllers that are like right. that don't have DRAM or there's a very small amount of DRAM built into the controller. Right. And. You have to add extra DRAM external if you wanted to go higher than X amount of I see. gigabytes worth, on a, on a of, worth of flash. Yep. Yeah. So that's probably where the limit's coming from. Um, All right. Yeah, but they're going for the, the just the po- bargain basement play, right? I mean, $68 and, for a 240 gig SSD. Yeah. It's pretty darn cheap. It, sound, it's, it's, it just sounds good, even if it's not like that much better than anything else. Like, yeah. I mean... Well, the performance is not supposed to be knocking anybody's socks off, even though the the on the box specs look like the typical, you know, five fifty like, reads, five thirty writes. Yeah, kind of even though the write speed sustained is not going to be five thirty. Right. It, but th- th- what they're talking about is the SLC cache because it's going to be a TLC flash, of course. Right. Uh, but with a small SLC cache, probably smaller than normal SLC cache, I would imagine. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, just they're just going for cheap stuff and like even if the performance is mediocre or at least average right then prices like that is what pulls down the higher sure. performing ones so sure. you know it's it's a win even if the drive is not what, that great performance wise because the, the price is so low what's the best budget ssd right now not that there was one that came out recently under the 850 evo was it the 600p the 600p is nvme Oh, okay, okay. But it is, it is, if you have it... Yeah, not that. It's talking about just SATA. What was one? You said the 750? 750. The 750 um, Evo. Yeah, the 750 Evo is... It'll the, be even less, but it doesn't go... I was I was trying to yeah. think, like, at that price, a one terabyte SSD would be 280 bucks, and that sounds pretty awesome. And, and this is probably a similar play to what Samsung did with the 750 wow. Evo. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're, you know, Samsung was using... their that's That drive has their planar NAND in it, not their 3D NAND. So it's like they went back to their... You know, older yeah, generation older, stuff. stuff. Yeah, older, slower. You could buy a 500 gig Samsung 750 Evo for 129 dollars, and Amazon offers a 250 dollars service that will transfer your files from your existing hard drive to a new customer supplied hard drive. 250 dollars. Remover removal of existing hard drive from computer and installation of new hard drive and validate successful data transfer. You like the- send your whole computer out to? That them? sounds like somebody comes to your house and does it. Really? Because it says removal of existing hard drive from computer and installation of new hard drive. So unless they're sending oh. you a PDF doc on how to do it for $250. Sure, that's an expensive that sounds, PDF. Sounds a little bit unnecessary. Um, uh, so that's yeah. um, that's pretty cheap for that Samsung Not one. the service. 
No, not the service. <laughs> so so a, a scrawny guy comes in with a screwdriver and a copy of Acronis. Correct. Yeah. 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 It says that'll Worth be $250, it. please. Scratches, <laughs> scratches up your gloss black case. Yeah. You know. I'll buff that out for you for another 30 bucks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bust out his dual orbital buffer. Oh, man. Uh, what else we got? AOC announces the U.S. availability of premium gaming monitor line, monitor line Aegon. What? Aegon. Aegon? Aegon. Aegon. It's not the best brand I've ever I thought you said heard. Egon at first. But. Um, so they have two 27-inch 1440p gaming monitors. One of them is G-Sync. One of them is... They don't actually use the term free sync. They say adaptive sync. Um, That's what the cool kids say now. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're identical across the board. Actually, they're Except not. Except for that viewing angle. The viewing... Nope. Oh, okay. So, one's TN, one's IPS. Yeah, okay. So the Guess which sync, one's which. The, the free sync is the TN, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's got the one millisecond response, the lower viewing angle. Okay. And it's only rated 144 hertz. The G sync model is uh, IP. Is it say IPS specifically or does it call it out? Yeah. It does say IPS. And then it's. Uh, it could be IPS type. 165. Yeah. So yeah, it's a little it bit slower response time, but it goes up to 165 yes. hertz. So it's, a, it's almost sure, surely the same panel that's in that Asus and that Acer monitor that's been out yeah. for a while. Probably. So and so your TN is six hundred bucks. Six hundred bucks for the a, yep. a, a, the TN one. How much is and the, the IPS G Sync? Eight hundred. Eight hundred. Okay. Well, you're getting G Sync and you're getting the better panel. Yeah, it, it is. It's better and it's got a higher refresh rate. The response time is obviously it's going to be like four, right? It's or, four. It is. It's four. Yeah. Yeah. So it's literally the same. The same thing. Another another company coming into the into the the gaming monitor the gaming monitor realm. With, cool. With Aegon. I was hoping that AOC would come in with lower prices, like they normally yeah. do. Yeah, but maybe eventually. I don't want eventually, Josh. I want now. Even you dip even your toes into the pool. Even Dell is making. There are too many toes in the pool. Even Dell's making panels Some like that. Some fat guy needs to jump in and make a big splash yeah. and make I a mean, five hundred dollar <laughs> monitor. I mean, what, what's that Asus one hundred sixty five hertz monitor cost? That's up there. That's like seven or eight hundred. It's probably for the yeah, one sixty five. Why would I buy an AOC monitor of an Asus this, for the same that, price? That IPS is. Agree. What's the refresh on that IPS? One sixty five. That's the one sixty five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's literally the same configurations that Asus. You can get and Acer. The the prices on the one forty fours are coming down. Dell even makes a fourteen forty p twenty seven inch G Sync one forty four, and it's like six hundred bucks. Okay. From Dell. Yeah, the, the, so. the Asus ROG Swift PG279Q, which is the IPS 165 hertz, 4 millisecond G-Sync, is yeah. $799 on Amazon. Yep. So you're right. Uh, Ken brings up a good point. If, I, if I'm given the option of this AOC monitor, this Asus monitor, and they're literally identical prices, wh which one are you going to pick? Go Probably going to go 165. The Asus. No, they're both the same oh, spec. That's 165 also? Yeah. I thought you said it was 144. We, we, Sorry. <sighs> Who's on first? It's been a long day. We, we literally, like, I said this like five times in the last 10 seconds. Okay, seconds. okay, okay. They're identical monitors. And Acer makes one also that might be cheaper and than 800. And it's probably the same price. To <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Not Asus. Acer. <laughs> is that one 165 as well? It is. <laughs> but that one's been running cheaper than 800, is my point. Oh. It's been like 750. Oh, Alan. Oh, Alan. Fair point. And I actually like the stand Wait, better. Wait, but what about like AOC? That. Is the AOC one 140? <laughs> yes, it's 144. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's the 165 oh model. Oh, my God. All uh. right. Moving away from that shit. Uh, EVGA adds a <laughs> uh, another card into their lineup, the water-cooled version of the GTX 1070. Are these water? Are these self-contained water-cooled cards really selling that well? Why do you need to water cool a 1070? You don't, and you don't, and if you do, you don't need to do it this way. I mean, you can't even crank the voltage up too. high enough to to like increase the power enough to warm. I mean, the you're water gonna cooler. run at lower temperatures. Sure, you're gonna run at probably more consistent clocks, like more like sustained at the higher boost clocks than you would otherwise. Yeah, but it draws like light bulb level power. What does? Like a 1070? No, but it doesn't matter. Like, there's still variability in the clock speed. Sure. Once it's once it's heated up. So the water cooler would prevent that. But I, I don't know. There, there's, there are tons of companies that are doing this. There's the MSI Corsair combo. Seahawk. The Seahawk is the, uh, is the MSI brand for it. So how much more is that guy compared to, like, a regular 1070? It's 500 instead of... 
you know, about four hundred or so. Well, so you're spending a hundred bucks for a water cooler? I I don't think the air cooled version of that card would be four hundred dollars. No, it's it's well, like well, four, the, the MSRP of the ten seventy is supposed to be three seventy nine. A ten seventy SSC for. 398 yep. or something like that. Okay. The 1070 FTW. Wait, did is... you say it started with a three, Josh? Yeah. What? Like 398. That's what he said. Okay. The like 1070 high, FTW. So you're is telling me we still. Hold oh. on. Let me check real fast. Um, oh, I know where you're going. I linked one two weeks ago. That yeah. Was, was right it in the threes? $400. Did it start with a three? All I want is for it I to start it with a three. three. But... Oh, wait, wait. Nope. That's a pre order. Hold on. No, no, no. <sighs> No. What was the MSRP? No, 379. Oh. Um on now in stock.net there are currently zero nope, one. There's one Zotac listed at 389. I don't see it on here. No, no, I don't believe you. There's okay, somebody fine. somebody in the party out here saying that uh there's a gigabyte on Newag that's 399. Okay, and it does say C site. Let me click through and C site here. Four forty nine. With a bundle? <laughs> None of those <laughs> sounds are. Sounds like a good <laughs> deal. <laughs> sounds like it's, it's not. Uh, four oh nine. The war four rebate. was free. The wait, there's of, wait. You guys have a bundle going bundle on. Bundle of That's junk weird. you don't need. You guys should advertise that so people would know about it. You guys should advertise that so people would know. That's weird. You guys should future game of the year. You guys should sell your card at their MSRP. You're just making that. You're just making that up. So. uh... Three ninety nine for the mini GTX ten seventy mini ITX. That's actually yes. pretty good. That was actually. the cheapest one I saw. Yeah. Save money on that shorter PCB. And you don't have Save to spend the, the extra PCB. forty bucks to get Gears of um, War for free. So back to the EVGA hybrid here. The difference is it's so it's a five hundred buck MSRP. Um, they're running it at a hundred megahertz over on the base clock and one hundred and ten megahertz over on the boost clock. Okay. So it is overclocked out of the box. Memory stays the same. Now, the, the t they list the TDP of this card of 215 watts, which is interesting. Yeah, no, the, the, it's, wa it's a water cooler. They're, they're adding the uh, rad adding into the pump there. Power. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it's, they're not... Yeah, if the card's powering 65 the 65 watts for that? That yeah. seems high. That yeah. seems like a lot. Yeah, it seems excessive, but I, I where else is it coming much. from? I think it's from the overclocked settings. Maybe they're just kind of default applying the max over voltage or something like that. But. Yeah, because I don't think you would get much more overclock headroom out of that. Like, you know, when you get those that are you won't get out of the box. more overclocking, but you would get, again, like that, you would stay at the higher clock yeah. of that overclock more consistently. So. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I To me, I've, I've reviewed a couple of these, and, we, and I've seen many. I, I don't I guess the appeal is there for them because everybody keeps making them and keeps producing them. These kind of clearly an all-in-one CPU water cooler style design just yeah. plopped onto this, but you still have to have the fan on it for the memory and the and the uh, power power I mean, delivery and all that I, type of stuff. I mean, you can get the air cooled ones to run without throttling, but you have to have, they're loud as heck because you have to crank the fan up. Yeah. Whereas those you don't have to because you have more surface area, bigger fan, stuff like that. It's quieter. Yep. All right, last bit of news here. NZXT releases a sweet ass case. Jeremy, what is this case? It's kind of pretty, isn't it? It's got like a holder for your VR I, headset. I find that to it, be. It's got a puck. Yeah. That's actually was, the VR puck. I was going to call it like a pig nose. It looks like a pig nose to me. It does, but apparently it's supposed to be a puck. And it's actually a really good idea. It is, but yeah, it doesn't have. If you look at it, it's right behind, right in front of the fan. It's a really large pencil sharpener. Oh. <laughs> if you're brave enough, you can stick anything yeah, in there. You, I you guess sharpen, if you, wanted, you sharpen the 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 back end of your uh, Vive controllers. Yeah, it. you just so you stab that's, that's what I was going. gonna say though. There's like it's like they're halfway there, right? Because like I think the more popular VR thing right now is the Vive as opposed to the Rift. Uh, I I can make that for you. So there's no place to put the controllers. Yeah, I, I can see that being... It's nice that you can hang the headset it there. Is. Where do you put the other things? True. You know, But if you have I these extra pieces around. of plastic that are meant to hold controllers, then you don't have the Vive. True. So you can just have these weird pieces of plastic sticking out. I, I To me, this looks more like that should be an add-on. Right? All you need is a couple of hooks at the top corners of that thing just to hang well, it. Well, like, it won't work for this case because this case doesn't have... This is, by the way, we're talking about the S340 Elite uh, from NZXT. It has a a tempered glass side, which I think is very attractive looking. Um, well, it's starting to catch on. It's a, 
I've seen a couple of cases recently yeah. of the straight to the edge tempered glass on it. I love and it. And, it, and all the graphic artists love it because they get to use that Apple line, like the with like the reflection oh. you know, through it. That mm. the you know. yes, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but okay, so this doesn't have the pig nose piece on it. So it's movable. Oh, is it? It's magnetic. Oh. So you want to put it next to your. Uh. Is it really magnetic? Spinning drives. Well, <laughs> kind of has to be, I think. VR cable but, management puck. Move freely in clean cables. All right. And, and there's no obvious mounting point on the front. So front you put it wherever you want. Accessibility. It also would just right? work well for a nice pair of headphones. Yeah, yeah not have yeah, VR absolutely. headphones. Absolutely. To make yeah. sense. Yeah. To me, like, there's, there's, there might be a market for, like, uh, Something that, and like I said, I was gonna say it won't work on this case because there's no three and a half or five and a quarter inch bays. But you can imagine something that replaces the space of two five and a quarter inch bays. Like you take off two empty plastic bays and slide this thing in, and it has the puck on it. It has the pig all, nose. All, on all it. I can think of is just install one of Josh's Blu-ray players and just hit eject and just hang it on the tray. <laughs> you can do that too, but when you power off the system, it's, it's gonna close. Cup, cup and then your, and then your thing falls. Don't power off the system. Never uh, power off. Your people system. power off their systems. I don't. Uh, I don't. But between the puck and the tempered glass, it'll cost you uh, thirty bucks more than the base model did. So ninety nine so bucks. It's a hundred bucks instead of seventy. That's okay. Which is not bad at all. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. I'm really kind of curious what the uh, oh, what the uh, shipping damage is on uh, the tempered glass cases yeah. as compared. Those are fairly fragile. Yeah. Tempered glass. Yeah. I don't know. I imagine they figured it out by now if they're willing to sell a case for sixty nine dollars. No, wait, ninety nine dollars. Yeah, with tempered glass. I mean, tempered glass de- tends to be like reasonably flexible until until it breaks. Until it breaks, it goes into a thousand pieces. Yeah, but I'd rather a thousand kind of blunt edged pieces as opposed to like a few nice, really sharp ones. When you pick up your hands and start bleeding, yeah, those yeah. are great. Uh, all right, let's get into our hardware software picks of the week, everybody. Um, mine is. This is a tentative suggestion because I'm only several days. Ah, what a shill! Clearly, Apple is you're paying still, me, and you're still on your other arm. Are still well, no, wearing. but I but I did that before. So my, oh, that's true. I'm te- I'm not testing out. I bought the Apple Watch Series Two. Yep. Um, that I had never had an Apple Watch before. I had used Samsung. What is it? Galaxy Gear? No, Moto. What was the Moto G? Yeah. Moto 360. You had 360 I had, for a while. I had the I had the one of Samsung one. Gear before that. Yeah. Um, and then I had the Pebble Time for like 18 months. You've gone through like all of the smartwatches. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And I had kind of decided about halfway through the, the first Apple Watch's life. Like when they update it to clearly have additional battery life, that's when I'll buy one and actually try it. And they mm. didn't really do much for battery life this time around. Nope. Um, I mean, kind they of. They didn't even no. really talk about it. Yeah. I mean, the 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 advantage is a, the advantage is you have a brighter screen and not worse battery life. Yeah. Than they had before. So the the main changes are the waterproofness, uh, the integrated GPS, and um, what I just said before the thousand nits screen, the brighter screen. Yep. Um, twice twice as bright apparently as the previous one. Um, and so far it's been pretty good. Uh, I don't have any complaints about it. It works fairly well. Um. I don't do a whole lot with it. I think mo- partly because my you're used to just using the phone. My workflow became oh, I use it as a notifications thing with the Pebble Time, and then I go to my phone to react and whatever I, what I need to. And I, you don't have to do that as much yeah. when you're using the Apple Watch, right? You can reply, you can interact, you can launch apps from it. You know, you can do more stuff with it. Uh, the battery life is still a bummer for me. You have to charge it. I'm told every day, especially when you start to get more apps that are using it and you're using it more for, for Siri type stuff or whatever. Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, the I will say this, the Pebble Time used to last me five days and the battery, now, it doesn't. now it's like two and a half. Oh, wow. Thing. That's really bad. Well, that's a tiny ass battery. Yeah, I guess. So I don't know. Um, but, uh, you know. So like, are we at Dick, Dick Tracy levels yet? No, oh. I, I accidentally answered a call on my watch. Like... It was one of those things where on the Pebble Time, when you answer it on your on the watch, it just answers it on the phone. Yeah. And it puts it in speaker. And so you just instinctively. And I, and I, hit, I hit the accept button on here. And I, and I think, like, I was talking with Andrew from Logitech or whatever he called me. And, like, I, it shocked me because his voice came out of my wrist. Yeah. And I was like, uh, I don't know what to do. You can transition. And yeah, I, tra- the- I transferred it back to the yeah. phone or whatever, and it was fine. But I, 
I didn't want to have. I didn't want to start Dick doing Tracy. the Dick Tracy stuff. <laughs> on it. And it, but the thing is, it didn't sound awful. It was you know passable. In, yeah. In a, in, in, if you'd have to do it right, but uh, what, what I noticed on the original Apple Watch was that like the person on the other end like sounded even clearer on the watch mic than on like uh, oh really? Like, I like an talked, iPhone. I haven't 6. talked to anybody on that's using one yet. So. There's just something about like for some reason the mic sounded better. I was just surprised. I don't know. It's like when I talk to Kelly on the phone, I get a lot of muffle. <laughs> like like she's shoving the phone against her face, yeah, or her hand is down here. She's shouldering it. Yeah, like, there's some of that in there too. Yeah, but anyway, so that's I, I'm just getting started with it, and we'll see, uh, you know, how much I like or dislike or whatever. But uh, it seemed like the logical choice if I was going to stay in the iOS ecosystem on the phone side. So, yep. Jeremy, what do you got for me? A good Canadian deal. It's no a little bit old, but. The uh, 850 Evo M.2 500 gig for less than 200 bucks in Canada, or well, and even 200 bucks, is pretty damn impressive. Make sure everybody knows it's SATA. Well, no, well, yes, M.2 M. M. SATA. SATA. It does and in it fact, right if you want to save even more, you go for the M SATA version, and it gets a little bit cheaper. Yeah. So you, you got a few to choose oh, from, but that one I mean, when, when you're looking at some of the stuff that you're talking about most of the time... All the models are within like three dollars of each other. Yeah, for for but the five hundred gig, in, in Canadian dollars, not in American dollars, because if you're looking at like the seven fifties up here right now, it's bloody obnoxious. Oh, did you yeah. know the Newegg Canada? Newegg has a VR central. Hashtag Newegg VR. Interesting. This is uh, interesting. Yeah, like look at the price on the Vive. How much is that? That's the U.S. Real. price. Yeah, that's oh. the U.S. Prune. Yeah. That's they're teasing us. That is not the Canadian price. Weird. What a dumb page. In any event, all right. What do you got for me, Josh? Um, uh, you know, memory is still incredibly cheap. I've been using this in the new graphics test bed. It's uh, just what some of the uh, on, G okay. Skill DDR four twenty four hundred. Have you noticed that any kind of real performance improvements going above 2400? I mean, I think, um, I think your improvements that you're going to get no. is like with the latency. No. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I would say I, I would say a hearty no. Yeah, I, I think it's we're, we're kind of past memory speeds with, you know, yes. the large caches that we have on modern capacity chips. is king. Yeah, but 16 gigs up. for just like 62 him? bucks. That's it's pretty good. That's Sixteen kind of gigs for sixty two dollars. Yeah. 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 But it looks nice too and runs cool. Yeah. Oh wait a minute. Yeah. Speaking of looking nice memory, what the hell happened to that? Did we not have that in there? What? All right. Well. Anyway, go to PCBird.com. Corsair released some memory that is like super shiny on all sides. We'll talk about it next week. Well, unless you get the matte black version. Unless you get the matte black. Or you can get the version that scratches really easily. Yeah. All right. Alan? Uh, so I've been uh, using this uh, ThinkPad X1 Yoga thing with the OLED screen. Mm-hmm. My goodness, every laptop needs to have a screen like this. Like it, seriously, it just it just does. Like um, well we saw it we saw it at CES last year, and they showed the IPS next to the OLED, and it was an immediate difference. But, well, it, in the, to take that with a grain of salt, like that screen, you could not turn the brightness down on yet. Because it was a beta. Sure. Like, they didn't have, like, the adjustment yeah. just didn't do anything. So it kind of didn't have a choice, but then to be, like, super more vivid and bright than well, even the IPS screen cranked the all the way up. up. Yeah. It, it was still even brighter than that. Yeah. This one, even now, with it being, you know, that you can actually adjust it down and have, like, normal brightness and stuff like that. Yeah. It's still, when the black is just a black hole on the screen compared to anything that's trying to be lit, right? Like... It makes it makes it seem like it's even a better resolution. Like it's just the contrast is so dang sharp on it, hmm. since the contrast ratio is basically like infinity. Right. You know, it's just it's either black or you know whatever the color is. Or now, certain TV sets have been claiming like a billion to one contrast ratios for years. <laughs> it, well, I, I guess, but this inaccurately. Is, but this is actually right. like you know, I mean, well, I mean, when when the problem you have is that you have a hard time telling what the b actual bottom of the screen is. Like if you hide your your taskbar, yeah, like the bezel. The bezel's black. Yes. The, when the screen it's is like off, it's black. just black. Yeah, and like it, it's like 
I was like, oh, where's the where's the bottom of the taskbar? Oh, I have to like go down and just to find the bottom of the screen. Right. It's impressive. Like, like when that's your problem. Now, how, did, how did you like, did you notice anything with battery life? Because but I guess you hadn't really seen the other one or anything like that. But so there, like, my theory had always been like, if you use Microsoft Word and you have a white screen, I put it the in majority of the time, that's going to be detrimental to your battery. Life. Yeah, you can help that a little bit because uh, Office 365 has like a dark mode now. Mm, okay, but it's a theme and it only applies to so the it's outer like things are like grayish and but not the main thing you're editing Right, yeah, but everything else is the borders yeah, and everything will help um, I do kind of like shifting things to like a darker theme anyway mm -hmm. So and you just have to realize that everything that's white on the screen is taking more power, right? Because it's actually that's the light Right the backlight is not a backlight. It's just the pixels. It's, just, it's an unfortunate thing because most apps are just built that way uh, right. True. Like, we're yeah. just used to things having white backgrounds and black text on them, and that's just the worst case scenario for OLED. Yeah. Um, th the other thing I caught myself with is like if you have the icons off on your background and you were just using like a black background, you might accidentally like crank the brightness up just instinctively and then like open up like F Windows Explorer or something. Oh. And then this white screen <laughs> comes on at like 100% brightness. Yeah. Out of no like it just, you have, n you have no kind of like feel for where the brightness is unless there's something being displayed on the screen hmm. that's so true you can see if you got an all black screen on an lcd you have you would an see idea the backlight the back yeah you would see the backlight bleed yeah. you know start coming through whereas this just doesn't do that and then as mm -hmm. far as like you know i was i was i had to edit photos on the fly for the samsung event and i was doing that on this and just like that's pretty good if anything they they actually include in the lenovo tools for this machine uh like six different color spaces for you to choose from the default is just like whatever the screen can do, right? But it's actually beyond regular, you know, standard color gamuts. So I actually had to pull it back to do photo editing. Mm. Um, I still wouldn't consider it a disadvantage. It's just like there's just way more there than, you know, way more color ability there. Right. And for just doing normal stuff like browsing or whatever, just stuff that doesn't have to be like photo color perfect or whatever, put it in the normal mode. It's a little more vivid than it should be, but it just makes like everything just pops. Like, just so dang well off of the screen. I liked it the times I played with it, so... Yeah, I mean, it's just... It, what's what's the added cost to it, do you know? I think it ends up being, like, $200 more compared to the other... That sounds about right. Like, yeah, the, the other IPS, models with the, the similar... And that's 2560 by 1440. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, and I'm, I'm not thrilled with, like, Windows scaling, but it, the default okay. was, like... The default that this came with was, like, 200% scaling, which I think just... Stuff gets too distorted. I made it 150. It's a good compromise. Agreed. And then it was handy. You know, I, I, I have a quick question. Yeah. Do you know if uh, if OLED uh, has been tested with G-Sync yet? Uh, I don't. I do not. Really? Maybe you should ask somebody. Yeah, well, I'll ask somebody after the podcast. But um, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the other thing is that the added contrast I found, because I was trying to, like, remote control the test bed back here because I'm working on new storage testing and stuff and I needed like just there were times where I just needed more real estate mm -hmm. so I just dropped it down to 100% scaling which you would think on that kind of a screen that's only 14 inches it's probably too small to really be able to read but the OLED just helps you read it that much better just because like, the contrast on the text and stuff because it's just everything is so dang sharp and with such sharp contrast as well that it just makes it easier to read and, like, I'm getting to the point where I'm starting to need reading glasses even for doing stuff like this close to me, right? Yeah, yeah. Not with this screen. Because, the con again, the contrast makes a difference. Mm. When you get to a point where your, your vision would start to be fuzzy, sharper contrast can punch oh, through sure. that. Yeah. Right? Kind of like how, how stuff can punch through, like, haze, right? Sharp contrast stuff can, like, pierce through haze. Same kind of deal. And it just, yeah, it's just, like, it's one of those things. <laughs> Alan, you can't have that laptop. No, but I'm going to probably buy one when we have to return this one. And and that's coming from a guy that does not like to buy a laptop. Like, and I'm still, I'm just sold on the dang screen because it's it's that impressive to me. Yeah, you can um, do that. I would wait till CES and, and see what, who other, who else is announcing stuff. You never know. And, yeah, there will, that, and if true. nothing else, Lenovo may have other options that are using it. Well, I mean, I do like, I do like the ThinkPad overall. Like, this has the oh, pen yeah. and like, the, oh, that's right. It does have, it, the, it does have the pen too. and oh. like that with the, what, super capacitor charges the really super quick. Cap. Yep. You know, and that's that's very accurate because I believe it's some sort of isn't it like a Wacom built into this or something or some derivative of Wacom. I don't know, I don't know but it's like it's good. It's very very responsive, very yeah. precise when you're using the pen Plus on it. It does the yoga thing. You can flip it around. <laughs> 
like you know it's 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 all it's a lot of goodies all in one machine with a Very really cool. really dang good screen yeah all right, everybody, that is going to do it for the show this week. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, if you want to find uh, RSS files, video downloads, MP3 downloads, YouTube videos, all that stuff, you can go to pcper.com slash podcast. Find all the information and show notes from, from this episode and all the previous episodes if you feel like downloading the previous uh, 400 and, well, I would say 418, but it's probably 412 because of those missing, those missing episodes. Uh, we found them. We found them all? When? Was I gone? There's a website. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's a website that has them. Okay. Uh, so there you go, everybody. So thank you for joining us. Uh, we will be back next week with more crap to talk about. Thanks, everybody, for joining. I'm Ryan Shroud. I'm Jeremy Elstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. I'm Alan Malventano. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting in-depth technical content by contributing at patreon.com slash pcper.